Thank you. Uh, Madam Secretary, you just said that, uh, as, as Chaim said, when you're president, um, you're going to take another shot at promoting Israeli-Palestinian peace. Uh, and you had, uh, you had uh, as you said, three meetings with uh, President Abbas and Prime Minister Netanyahu. And I was wondering, uh, when you take this another shot at making peace, what are your parameters for a uh, final status solution? For example, do you support, as uh, this administration supports, uh, that the borders of the Palestinian state will be based on the 1967 lines plus swaps. And a second question, are you going to support a policy that demands Israel to stop building in the settlements? Well, every administration, Republican and Democratic alike, have had the same policy on settlements. That's just you know, something that all American governments um, have supported for the last decades. And uh, we have tried different approaches to persuade the Israeli government uh, not to be expanding the territorial reach of settlements. Uh, and yes, I think that you know, any boundaries will have to be determined based on uh, agreement between the parties. And it will most likely involve land swaps of some sort. So I'm not going to lay out what I would try to do because that will only come after there has been deep consultation. And I, I'm well aware that many in Israel, uh, and particularly in the government, in various of its iterations going back several years now, you know, do not see President Abbas as, quote, a partner for peace. I ask, what is the alternative? Who is standing in the wings that will be a better partner for peace? In my dealings with him, he has been stalwart in continuing the security uh, cooperation with Israel. He has certainly been willing to explore uh, different ways of cooperation and confidence building. Uh, and I'm well aware that, uh, you know, he has his problems and uh, there's a lot of questions about his standing. Uh, but, you know, you, you have to start where you have to start from. And I think uh, it's been unfortunate that he's been, uh, in many eyes, marginalized when there really is, as yet, no alternative. And let's be honest here. The alternative could be the black flag of ISIS. Let's be honest, you know? If an ISIS commander's been in Gaza, you know that they've got folks wandering around the West Bank. So at some point, it's the lesser of two evils at the very worst. And if you believe, as I believe, that the discipline, focus, funding, ambition, barbarity, evil of ISIS is an existential threat to many people, and particularly could be viewed as such to Israel, then what is our alternative? So I, I guess I would go back and do what I could to try to find a way to, you know, at least begin to rebuild confidence and to do more to restrain some of the violence that are coming from Palestinians toward Israelis, and again, let's be honest, from some Israelis toward Palestinians and to see if we can't have some basis on which to go forward. I said at the beginning, I don't see any of this as easily done or quickly resolved. That would be foolish. But I think it's equally short-sighted not to keep trying because you've got to maintain some goal, some hope that doesn't completely you know, disappear in the face of a much brighter, shiny object, namely the attraction of radical, well-organized, well-funded jihadism. Uh, this would be our last question. Amos Yadlin. Uh, 